That's what I like. You wanna say hi, Victor? Say hi to the camera? Okay, you're gonna come in the camera. Okay. You wanna say hi, Sister Winnie? No, thank you. Okay, she's gonna say no, thank you. By being a book. This is gonna be a, probably a two or three part because uh, there's a lot to do. So my topic I wanna deal with is, uh, we have this Easter, what they say coming up. What is Easter? That's what I wanna deal with. What is Easter? Uh, go ahead and give me a, uh, first I wanna start off with, Easter's only mentioned one time in the Bible, period. One time in the Bible. And if you look up Easter, Easter is a Greek name for the Passover. It is in your Strong's Concordance. It'll be 3957 in the Greek, and it says Passover. If you don't believe me, or if you can, buy you one of these, Strong's Concordance. Every word in the King James 1611 or King James Version Bible, because that's the Bible you need to have. All these other translations aren't close and they're garbage. Get you a Strong's Concordance. Look up Easter, because it's only mentioned one time in the Bible. It'll say Passover. So Easter is a Greek name for Passover. Like if someone said, what's a, what's a, what's, how do you say light in Spanish, Victor? So that's how you say it in Spanish. It's the same thing. So my problem I have with people today is, if if Easter is Greek for Passover, why do they say that peop, uh, what they call Jesus, but Yeshua got resurrected on Easter? Why are they saying they got resurrected on Easter? When it, Jesus clearly died on the Passover. That's the problem with these liquor store churches today. They say, oh, Jesus resurrected on Easter. Jesus resurrected on Easter. No, he didn't. Jesus died on Easter because Easter is a Greek name for the Passover. Get you a strong concordance in that. Matter of fact, the thing that gets me, is it's just a basic definition. These preachers aren't even smart enough to look up the meaning of the word so they can preach truth to the people. They say Jesus resurrected when it means Passover, and he died on the Passover. And I'll prove that he died on the Passover, or what the Greeks call Easter in that day. Go ahead, give me Matthew chapter 26. We're going to start at verse 19. Matthew 26, 19. And the disciples did as Yeshua had appointed them, and they made them ready the Passover. Uh-oh, they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, that means the Passover started. He sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, uh, I, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one to say to one, one unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the ditch, ditch the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth that is written of him, but one unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It hath been good for that man if he had not been born. Some of you guys are in the same position, because you hear the word, and you disobey it, so it's better for you not to be born. Because he that knoweth the Lord's will, and did things worthy of death, shall be beaten with many stripes. It'll be better for you not to even know the way of the uh, word of God. And pretty much, if you go into a lake of fire, it's better for you not to be born too. So we look at Judas, hey, look at your own self while we're doing it. But let's keep going. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it unto the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and he gave it unto them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. So he did the Lord's Supper. He did the Lord's Supper. And he went up to the Mount of Olives. Then Judas betrayed him. They beat him that night. Then in the morning, they crucified him. And before the evening was set, they, uh, they took him off the cross. But let's keep going. Luke chapter 22. I'm going to prove that Yeshua died on the Passover. Luke chapter 22. We're going to start at verse 13. Luke 22, verse 13. And they went and found, as he said unto them, that they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down at the twelve and the apostles with them. And he said unto them, Which I desire, have I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer? Uh-oh. So he's with them on the Passover, and this is before he suffered. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. And I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Hey, hey you got to be quiet. got to be quiet. Yeah, got to be quiet. For I say unto you, uh, verse 19, And he took bread and gave thanks and break it, and he gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given up for you, uh, this do in remembrance of me. So later on he got crucified. But let's go to 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we'll start at verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So I always deal with these false holidays before they come up so people have a choice and know the truth, whether they're going to cater to the wickedness of the world or they're going to cater to the things of the Lord, whether they're going to give heed to the scriptures or they're going to give heed to their family and their friends and these false people that call themselves preachers and teachers, having these people celebrate idolatry. Because when you celebrate Easter, it's idolatry. The Easter that's not notated in the scripture. Easter is in the Bible, but how these hypocrites do it is wrong. So let's keep going. So, so how was he resurrected on the same day that he died? 
Now, I just showed you in three scriptures where he broke bread on the Passover, and then later on, if you read the rest of the, both stories in uh, Matthew and Luke, that he got crucified on the Passover. And then I showed you in 1 Corinthians 5, it says, Yeshua is our Passover. We need to keep the feast. So how, how, can, how can he be resurrected on the same day he died? Something's not right. Some preacher, some teacher, some evangelist, some elder, some bishop, some deacon, for who calling themselves one, is teaching something that's not lining up to the scriptures. So let's keep going. This ties into Good Friday. The reason why they preach Sunday, and they have Sunday all the time, uh, the Sunday uh, uh, Easter resurrection, or what they call it, because they believe in Good Friday. And I'm going to show you why they believe in Good Friday. And first of all, Good Friday came from some Catholic teachings, too. They pushed that Good Friday. But let's prove how that don't even line up to the book. Now we proved how these preachers can't even deal with basic a basic definition. They can't pick up a Webster dictionary or a Strong's Corners and look at the definition. Now I'm going to prove how they can't even count. Let's keep going. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, we're going to start at verse, we're going to start at verse 18. John chapter 2, verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto them, What sign sheweth thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews, then said the Jews, Forty-six years was this temple and built it, and will thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Okay. Verse 22. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them that they believed the scripture and the words which Yeshua had said. So he's saying, I'm going to destroy this temple, destroy my body, and in three days I'm going to raise it up. Let's keep going. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 38. Mark chapter 12, verse 38. Wait. Not Mark chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Here we go. I was like, what? Matthew chapter 12, verse 38. All righty. Yeah, Here we go. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, but there shall no sign given uh, it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights, three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of earth. So now we have another, another situation, because I already shot down one lie when they say that uh, Yeshua was resurrected. Yeshua was resurrected on, this, uh, on uh, Sunday. But then they say he died on Friday. He died on Friday. Good Friday, what they call it. So how do you get Friday to Sunday, three days and three nights? How do you get that? So let's keep going. We're going to go with Leviticus 23. See, the problem we have is, the reason why they say that is because they don't understand the law and the prophets. It says we are built upon the foundations of the law and the prophets. If you don't understand the law and the prophets, you ain't going to understand Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the rest of the letters. You ain't going to understand Revelations, how all Revelations tie around the feast days and how the feast days still stand. Let's go to Leviticus 23 and I'm going to show you. Show you with the scriptures. Leviticus 23. I'm going to show you this diagram, and I'm going to show you why they believe he was died on Friday, which doesn't even make sense, and why Sunday resurrection don't even line up to the scriptures. Leviticus 23, we're going to start at verse 1. Can you bring up the diagram? Can you bring up the diagram? Cool. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to zoom in on the diagram. I'll show you something real clear. It's going to be real clear, so you'll be able to understand that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Second right there. Okay. okay, Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, we'll start at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be a holy convocation. And convocation means assembly. You should be assembling with the brethren. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall the work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You should do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocation, we shall proclaim in the season. In the fourteenth day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover, all right? And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. The first day shall be a holy convocation, and you shall do no silver work, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Seven days, and it shall, the seventh day is a holy convocation, you shall do no silver work. So, this will be the fourteenth day. This day will be the Passover. The day right after the Passover, because the Passover is not a Sabbath, the day right after the Passover is a Sabbath. But it's not a normal Sabbath. It's a high Sabbath. It's a high Sabbath. 
These are the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is another high Sabbath. See, what happens is these Gregorian calendars, they try to force, like they force their Thanksgiving to be on the, what, the third Thursday or something of the month? And they try to force uh, what they call Easter to be on a Sunday. When it, your, does your birthday land on the same day every year? No, it doesn't. So what makes you think the Lord's feast day land on the same day every year? Because Easter means Passover. So if the Passover landed on a Tuesday, that makes what you call a Tuesday, that makes what you call Wednesday will be a high Sabbath. That has nothing to do with the normal Sabbath, which is Friday at evening and Saturday at evening. So for you to say, oh, Friday, because uh, it says Sabbath, and I'm going to show you the scriptures why they believe, oh, he, he died on the Sabbath and whatnot, but he resurrected on Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or something like that. He died on Friday, resurrected. They see the word Sabbath, but we're going to get into that Sabbath. It, he died on the Passover, so immediately the day after was a Sabbath, no matter what day that fell on, because it was a high Sabbath. If you read in Leviticus, chapter 23, 1 through 8, we'll explain that. So the 14th of the day is the Passover, the 15th day is a piece of unleavened bread, the first day you don't do any work, the seventh day you don't do any work. So let's keep going. Let's go to uh, Luke 23. We're going to go to Luke 23. We're going to start at verse 53. What chapter? Luke 23. Okay. And, he t and it says, this is after uh, Yeshua already uh, went into the grave, or already uh, gave up the ghost on the cross. And he took, uh, he took it down, or we'll start at 52. The man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Yeshua. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in the sepulcher that he hewed in stone, where no man, uh, where, wherein no man, never man before been laid, was laid. And this day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. So they say, oh, see, he, he died on a Friday. He died on a Friday, see, see? Let's keep going. It says, it's the preparation. What were they preparing for? We're going to keep going with that. Give me uh, Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Because this is where they mess up. They see the word Sabbath, and because they don't know the law, and they don't know the feast day, they automatically assume it's a normal Sabbath. The Passover could have hit on a Monday, then that would have made the Tuesday a Sabbath. It could have hit on a Wednesday, that would have made the Thursday a Sabbath. No matter what day the Passover hit, which is Greek for Easter, what people in Greek call it Easter, whatever day the Passover hit, the following day was a Sabbath. So when you read your Luke, and when you read your Mark, and you see it says Sabbath, you automatically assume it's the normal Sabbath, when it's just a high Sabbath. So don't just assume he died on a Friday because it says the word Sabbath. You need to learn your feast days, but you do away with the law, and that's why your mama's done away with it. So let's keep going. Luke 23, we're going to start at 50. Uh, <coughs> Mark chapter 15, verse 42. Mark chapter 15, verse 42. Like the last one. All right. Now when evening was come, because it was the pre preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, I'll go up a little bit further so that you kind of know what, what they were talking about. Let's go with 39. And when the centurion was stood over against him, saw that he cried out and gave up the ghost. This was Yeshua saying, truly this man was the son of God. There was also a woman looking upon him afar off, among whom was Mary Madeline and Mary the mother of James and Les and uh, Jose and Solomon, Salome, who also when they was in Galilee followed him and ministered unto him and with many other women which came up, up with him unto Jerusalem. Now, verse 42, now when the evening was come because it was a preparation that is the day before the Sabbath. What Sabbath was that? Because he died on the Passover. It was the day before the Sabbath. If you read the scripture, it says on the 14th day, you can't have any leaven in your house. On this day, you were supposed to get, by this day, you had to have all the leaven out of your house as you do because these feet still stands, but I'll prove that later on in another Bible study. So you should be preparing for this day because you better not have any leaven in your house on this day. So they were preparing. It was the Passover and they ate the Passover, but that same day they were getting all the leaven out of their house. So let's keep going. I'll prove that. I'll prove that when you read in Luke and Mark, oh, because it was a Sabbath, because it was a Sabbath, he died on the Sabbath, Good Friday, he died on Good Friday. I'll prove that doesn't line up because it says destroy this temple and in three days and three nights I'll, I'll rise up. Just like that Jonah was in the belly as well, three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man. So let's keep going. John chapter 19. John chapter 19. John chapter 19. I'm going to hit 31. 1931. And it says, we'll start at 30. And when Yeshua had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Look, this is where he, he, he died on the cross, right? And the Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation, that was the body should not re remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, right? On the Sabbath day. Oh, see, see, it was on the Sabbath day. Look, for that Sabbath was a high Sabbath. Besought Pilate and their and uh, 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 besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So because it was a 
high Sabbath. Why was it a high Sabbath? Because he died on the Passover. And no matter what day he died, because the Passover doesn't always land on a Friday, what you call a Friday, no matter what day he died, the following day will be a high Sabbath. So just because you read in Luke and Mark that it says the next day was a Sabbath, these liquor store churches take it off. Oh, oh, he died on a good Friday, good Friday. Oh, Resurrection Sunday, he died. And no, that's not what it's saying because you don't understand the Lord's feast days. But let's keep going. They had to take his body off. They had to take his body off before the, before the next day hit. And I'll show you why. Deuteronomy 21. I believe it's Deuteronomy 21. Okay, I'm going to start at verse 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, he shall be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree. All right? His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but you shall in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged on a tree is a curse of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So the day he died, it says they had to take him. This is why when Yeshua already given up the ghost and said, is it finished? The two thieves, one on each side of them, they went ahead and broke their legs and they took him down because no one can hang on the, hang on the tree overnight. This is why they, they broke the thieves' legs. This is why they had to take him off, but he already gave up the ghost. They were preparing for the high Sabbath. It wasn't a normal Sabbath. It was a high Sabbath. So when you see that Sabbath, you automatically assume he died on a Friday is what they call Good Friday. We're going to get into that right now. Let's see. We're almost done, too. We're going to go with how, did, how does the days work? We're about to jump down here in a little bit, so I'm going to need you to zoom. Go to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to show you how the days work and why this uh, Easter resurrection, not only saying he resurrected is a lie, and not only saying Good Friday uh, he died on the Sabbath is a lie, and resurrected on Sunday is a lie. I'm going to prove all throughout the Bible. Genesis 1 and 1. If you don't know, it's the first book in your Bible. These false preachers probably don't know that. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day, and in, in the darkness he called night. In the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, if you keep reading on when he created everything all six days and the seventh day, it says in the evening and the morning, God's time starts from sunset to sunset, from when it gets dark to when it gets dark. Gregorian's time 12 midnight to 12 midnight. So... Now we're going to get into why this doesn't work. All right. We're going to say, this is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is Gregorian. We're going to say this is a Gregorian calendar, right? This is a Gregorian calendar, right? Let me do it right here so other people there can see. This is a Gregorian calendar. So the Sabbath is from Friday, and I just made tally marks right there. <coughs> from Friday at sunset. And I just put six to represent, say, if it got sunset at six. So Friday at sunset to Saturday at sunset is the Sabbath. This is how God, this is the Lord's time. This is Gregorian pagan calendar time, American time, European time, pagan religion time. This is pagan religion time. This is the Lord's time. Pagan time, Lord's time, okay? So from Friday at sunset to Saturday at sunset, that, that will be the seventh day. This is the Sabbath. This is the day we're not supposed to work. So if these people are saying G Yeshua, Yeshua, who you call Jesus, died on the Sabbath, right? That means at night he went to Mount of Olives. Judas betrayed him. They took an apostles Pilate, they beat him, they made a kind of thorns. During the day, Saturday day, they brought him and had Simon carry the cross for him and put him on the cross. And before, because before sunset, which we just read, no, you can't keep a person on the cross overnight. They took him, Jesus off the cross, Saturday night, right? So that's one day. So he said three days and three nights, I shall be uh, shall the son of man be in the grave in the earth. And he said, destroy this temple in three days. So that will be one day. Saturday night to Sunday night, that's two days. Sunday night to Monday night, because he said three days and three nights. That takes you into Monday. So how can he die on a Friday and three days, three nights, you get Sunday resurrection? That, that makes absolutely no sense. So these preachers, not only they can't take a concordance and look up what Easter means, which is Passover. Not only they don't know how the Passover and the feast days work, so they don't understand Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then they can't even count, because they're trying to look at this Bible for a Gregorian calendar, when you should be looking at it from a Hebrew calendar, and three days, three nights do not take you to no Sunday. If he, he died on the Friday, what you're saying, Good Friday. So, with all that being said, I want to deal with something. Uh, first of all, if you look up Easter, I, I challenge you guys to look up Easter. We're going to be done for today because I've only hit like one-third of why, how these people celebrate Easter is false. If your church is celebrating Easter and saying he resurrected, your church is false. Get out of that hellhole. Get out of that liquor store church. False preacher. If these preachers say, oh, the gospel is the death, burial, or of the resurrection. The, do the death, burial, and the resurrection. That's the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection. They don't even have the death and the burial right. All they got is the resurrection. They got 33%. That's an F. They're a felon preacher. So if you look up the origin of Easter, I'll prove you. 
that is a pagan holiday with the goddess of fertility. So what they try to do, they try to, what they call Christianize, they try to get believers to adopt Easter. So they called it Easter, but really you're celebrating the goddess of fertility and you're celebrating, look up, look up the origin of Easter. That, that's pagan. That's idolatry. Every time you celebrate Easter, if, if you don't believe me, why do your churches have Easter egg bunnies? Where did that, show me in the Bible. Show me in the Bible where you have Easter egg bunnies. What does that have to do with Yeshua? What does that have to do about him dying, dying for your sins? What, 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 what's that have to do with dressing, wearing uh, special pink and bright colors for spring? It, 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 that proves that that's pagan. All that stuff. Leave that stuff alone. We're going to get with that in the next Bible study. The second thing I want to hit on is the Passover hits at different times every year. To prove it, look up your calendar and look up the Passover happens to hit this upcoming Sabbath, eight days from now. Uh, the Passover hits this. How do you get three days and three nights Easter Sunday? That makes no sense. Now, on top of that, look up the Passover when it hit 2014 and 2013. The Passover, which is really Easter, which is a Greek name. The Greeks called it Easter. The Passover hits on different times. So why is these people forcing it to be on a Sunday? Because that's that paganism. That's that pagan religion. Leave that stuff alone. There's no way in the world the Passover is hitting every Sunday. Just like your birthday doesn't hit the same day every year, the Passover doesn't hit the same day every year. So I want to, I want, I challenge you. That's the two things I challenge you. Look at the Passover, which is the Greek name for the Passover was Easter. It's only mentioned one time in the Bible. Look up, look up the Passover and look up when it hits every year. That shows you that just because it says uh, the next day was the Sabbath and they think he died on the Sabbath because Mary Madeline came on the first day of the week and he was risen. Oh, and, and they say, oh yeah, this and this and this. He was risen. He rose, rose up. And they see these scriptures. They don't know what Sabbath he's talking about. And then number two, look up the origin of Easter. Look it up. It did not come from no Apollo. It came from pagan religion. It's false. You cannot change something that is false in idolatry and try to turn it to God. That's no different than people making a circle with a star in it and they conjuring up demons and whatnot. And now someone says, you know what, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to pray to the Lord. You know what, I know uh, soothsayers, they do palm reading, and that's witchcraft, and, and they do tarot cards, and that's witchcraft. But you know what, I'm going to do tarot cards to seek the Lord. I'm going to do palm reading and try to get information from God. You can't do that. I'm going to play with the Ouija board because it stemmed from witchcraft. But you know what? I'm going to do it unto the Lord now. Uh, Easter, even though I know that came from some goddess of fertility and some foolishness and all this. Uh, actually, that's Thanksgiving, a little goddess of fertility. But Easter came from some pagan religion. I'm going to turn it and make it of God. You can't do that. If it's false, it's false. This is no lies of the truth. No matter how much you try to turn something that is against God to be for God, it'll never happen. That's why there's no such thing as no holy rap or no gospel rappers. That's, why, that's like saying, you know what? I know idolatry is wrong, but you know what? When I sleep with your wife, I'm going to do it unto the Lord. We're going to be praying before. I'm going to sleep with your wife, and then I'll pray after. And that way it's cool. It's cool, right? You can't turn something against God and make it for God. The origin of Easter is against the Almighty, is against the Scripture. So no matter how you try to word it, no matter how much you don't want to give up those Easter eggs and those Cadbury cream eggs, I used to enjoy those things. Those things were pleasure. It says a pleasure of sin is but for a season. Those good Cadbury cream eggs were pleasurable. They having the Easter egg bunny and being all excited on that day, hey, that was pleasurable. But I put that stuff down. Put that idolatry down. Seek these things out. Don't believe me? Get this. Look at the definition of Easter. It's Passover. Jesus died on the Passover. He was not resurrected on the Passover. It says no lies are the truth. It says if it's, a, if it's lies in it, then who's it from? Because the father of lies is who? Satan. So don't be following Satan and follow the Lord. With all that being said, keep standing. There's going to be a part two, possibly a part three. Only, only scratch the surface. We're going to get deeper in the scriptures dealing with this Easter and what they, these liquor store churches are celebrating. All right. Keep standing. Don't drop standards.